Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux, open source, and pretty much anything else we find interesting. I'm Vin, that is Jill, and you, or you, at home, on Twitch, watching us live, <laughs> listening to us after the fact. What is up and new? You guys are playing like room Jenga, trying to get ready for a remodeling in your house. We were talking about yeah. that in the pre-show. Yeah, absolutely. For, first, we're going to do the outside of the house because it needs the greatest attention. New driveway, new landscape, new uh, driveway gate, new new front porch, er everything. All that needs to be <laughs> up upgraded. But we're also in the process of working. In, we've been working actually inside the house for quite a while. So we're trying to come up with solutions on how we're going to uh, play the uh the construction uh, puzzle in the house. <laughs> yes. It is, when you have a small house, it's a thing. <laughs> even in a big house. Even in a big house, yeah. you got to do the thing. To where, <laughs> it's like, okay, I can put that in the living room, put that in that room. And yeah, it's not a fun game to play. How's Jim doing? That's what I've named the piano. Oh, yes. <laughs> Jim is doing well. Right. Actually, uh, Steve Husband was going to look into uh, calling Goodwill today because okay. <laughs> they do take them. <laughs> Fair enough. But he found, he said, he just said he found a, a, a door guy. Yay, good. All right. <laughs> we need new doors. Too. <laughs> it's going to be like a brand new place. Man, yes. you know what? It's exciting. It's also a bit of a pain, but it's worth it. You know, to do it, it definitely is. It definitely is. I'm looking forward to the finished result because my father was a contractor. So I grew up in a house that was constantly changing. So <laughs> oh, it's kind of nice. It'll be nice to have. Have everything finished and done. <laughs> it will. It will, but you also <laughs> got to do that thing, man, because we've been like, you know, when you're trying to like work on somebody's PC and they're hovering over you? Yeah. <laughs> you got to fight that urge. Yes. Like, absolutely. Yeah, well, I'm <laughs> oh, man, it's going to be tough. Uh, what have I been up to? Hacking on Jitsi, making Jitsi do like strange and unnatural things. Not really, but yeah, I've, I've found a way to like ratchet up the audio quality. Traditionally, with our shows, we use Sonobus, which, you know, audio back in is separate from the video and it stays synced up. I found mm -hmm. a way to push Jitsi really hard in the uh, using Opus Kodak. And Jill's coming in directly. Her audio is coming in over Jitsi mm -hmm. now. Yet still taking a, you know, side trip. And it's going over to the Dawn, getting run back into OBS. And we're doing the processing live, but worked good. We tried it out Saturday. Didn't have a problem with it. No, it it's just a simplify everything and to cause Jill to look over to her right where Sonobus normally yeah, would be. Yeah, I know. I keep looking over there. <laughs> over to my my vertical monitor on the right. <laughs> RIP. Sonobus, if you haven't used it, it's brilliant piece of software. And like, if you're thinking about doing any type of podcasting, look into it. Not designed for it, mm -hmm. but really good for it also. <clears throat> I got mm -hmm. these. Oh, yeah. You got the big... Uh, Huge headphones that are even big for Ven. <laughs> Massive, man. I, I got these so I can, uh, I, I, to get attention. No, these will never leave this room. I, I don't even wear them on the stream. I joked about doing it one time because they are so ungainly. They, they're massive. Metal, they're heavy. Why would you buy all these? And they don't sound good. In fact, I got a switch, Jill, right here. It's got three different settings to make it sound bad in three different ways. Oh, bass boost and all that stuff. Ugh. <laughs> Not like you would think. Not like what you would think. Oh, okay. These, despite being fugly, are professional mixing headphones uh, with a variable oh, okay. built into them. These are from mm -hmm. Haventone, uh, creators of the Mix Cube. You can look that up. Uh, highly, highly rated. Also, these things are wicked expensive, but I don't pay retail. I waited. I got these for half price. Uh, now, what they mm -hmm. do is... Something I have to do in here when we're doing mixing is, you know, I typically wear my Sony MDR 7506s. You know, these things have been around for 30 years, industry standard. They get the job done. They're not brilliant, but they work. But I need to know, you know, if I mix everything on these, I'm like, well, how's it going to sound on an iPhone, earbuds, cheap headsets, uh, on tablet speakers? Because it's going to sound mm -hmm. completely different. Yeah. And you got to find a nice little average. That's the brilliant part about these. And, you know, especially with people like Beats headphones and stuff like that, that have like bass boosts and all that other stuff. They have a regular setting that is kind of cued to that. That's like neutral. Like, 
okay, this is what it's going to sound like in, you know, mm. people's head, you know, headphones, you know, you buy a pair of headphones, it's going to sound closer to that. Then it's got a mix cube mode, which is EQ'd closer to their mix cube. It pulls out a lot of the stereo separation, maintains it, but, you know, it gives you a nice solid center channel. And of course, if you flip it all the way back, it gives you a uh, mono signal. So you can mix oh, it Oh, okay. That. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty nice. They get the job done. They are cumbersome. They are heavy. They're not comfortable to wear. Uh, as I said on Saturday, if you see somebody walking around down with these, feel free to like go like why? Like they want to be seen. <laughs> I guess every review for these, <laughs> every uh-huh. single review, I challenge you. These are called the MP ones from Avondon. I'm like yeah, they work. They work. They work. But every review has a section about how ugly they are well deserved because they are quite quite ugly <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they are in fact hideous unlike a new product from lombada oh this is this is just really exciting news we're going to be talking about the razor x lambda tensor book the world's most powerful ubuntu linux laptop designed for deep learning you heard that right Razor, I've been waiting for them to get into the Linux game. <laughs> so Lambda is a provider of deep learning infrastructures, and it, and they have teamed up with Razor to build a Linux-powered laptop for deep learning and AI. And of course, you can game on it too. <laughs> so the, the specs are an Intel i7, um, 11th gen, octa-core processor featuring up to 4.6 gigahertz clock speeds, an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 Max-Q graphics card with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, up to 64 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz DDR4 memory, and a 15.6-inch 2K uh, 1440p 165 refresh display. Oh my gosh, this is really amazing. And I was amazed. Look how thin and sleek this laptop is for all that power. Pretty sweet. And uh, this laptop, the TensorBook laptop, actually comes with the Lambda GPU cloud service and the full Lambda stack, which includes software like NVIDIA CUDA, QDNN, PyTorch, TensorFlow, Keras, CAFE, and CAFE2, as well as the NVIDIA classic NVIDIA drivers, and various other useful Linux tools like Build Essential, GNU Emacs, of course, Git, HTOP, woohoo, GNU Screen, Tmux, Valgrind, and Vim. Yeah, you have to have those to be... (laughs) Us us Linux diehards have to have those, that piece of software. Well, you definitely get to have Emacs kicking around in there. Yeah. Now, you know what? They did a good job with this. I was looking over it and like, yeah, okay, th- this looks a lot like um, the Razer Blade 15 advanced model because yeah. it, at its core, it is minus the blinky keyboard. I consider that mm-hmm. an absolute win. Um, you do get one year of lim- Lambda engineering support warranty or like up to three years. Uh, you can buy yeah. up to three years. And you no. Know, I will say though, like price wise, uh, these are like anywhere from thirty four hundred dollars to five grand. Yeah, uh, workstations. W- <laughs> two workstations. I would expect uh, at that price to get uh, Alder Lake in the CPU department, oh. something newer. You know, instead of the okay. previous gen with Intel. I'm just gonna that's, be honest. That's true. I think that's a fair criticism. Also, mm-hmm. also, I gotta wonder. Windows 10 mm. Pro, if you want to add, how much does Windows 10 Pro cost? Is <laughs> An it extra $500. $500. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why spend an extra $500? <laughs> yeah. How, how? It's meant for Linux. Just put Linux on there. <laughs> it comes with Ubuntu. <laughs> maybe you can think of it as uh they're trying to help actively discourage people from buying windows 10 pro yes that's a good point then yeah (laughs) there's enough disdain at the company like if we have to touch windows you're gonna have to pay for it 
I'm going to sully my hands with Windows 10. I don't know. Yeah. It's a pretty <laughs> nice bit of kit. Uh, if you're really into, is. you know, if you're living that PyTorch life and you're doing that, you know, mm-hmm. plenty of memory on both GPU and CPU. Plus, you know, you get some cloud credits thrown in. Like, all right, right on. You yeah, get really one? nice. Why don't you get two? <laughs> no, uh, but in, in the future, you know, I, I have a feeling they're probably going to come out with some other models with different price points. And I've actually been really looking forward to Razer releasing, you know, Linux laptops because they've actually been talking about it for quite some time. I even had uh, one of the Razer representatives um, when I went to the Open Source Summit in San Diego in 2019. He had asked me if I would like to review Razer products for use on Linux and to test Linux installed on them. And I said, absolutely. And I actually just recently got an email from them. (laughs) So (laughs) that was really cool. So it's they're serious about their their Linuxing, and obvious with this release, they are. So it'll be nice to get Razer laptops, gaming ones as well. Now with the success of the Steam Deck, we'll, we'll probably have some Razer gaming laptops with Linux pre-installed. That's cool. Might be interesting. <laughs> One thing you always want to keep in mind when you're ordering things like this, a lot of the price difference, because you're thinking, hey, man, could I just go out and get a you know Razer laptop? And save a ground or two. Yeah. But paying for the support. You know, yeah, same thing absolutely. with System 76. Uh, you know, it's very price competitive, but you have that support there. You got a problem with a product. You pick up the phone. You're not on, you know, digging up an email thread from five years ago, hoping like, what did you see? Can you tell me what my problem mm-hmm. is? No, the phone support. Like, hey, we can fix this for you. Trained personnel. And that is that. Good work, everyone. Good work on Woo-hoo. that. Now. I want to talk about something that is on every box in the studio. I mean, everything, even the Raspberry Pi back here on the rack is running Debian. Got three boxes down here, three PCs. Got another one over here running OBS that's feeding you live. Got another one over here running an entire audio stack. Debian gets the job done. It's nuts and bolts. I like it. And kind of maybe for the wrong reasons. Reminds me of the old days. Joe, we were mm-hmm. talking about that. Absolutely. You know, hey, it's, it's just, hey, here's something. If you can get it up and working, have fun. Debian does a lot better than that. It usually comes out of the box, no problems. But Steve, of all people. <laughs> yeah, he, he, my Steve husband wouldn't like to use Debian, honestly. <laughs> I would have to set it up for him. <laughs> Steve's talking about the firmware. And what they're going to do about it. And the TLDR on this firmware support in Debian sucks. And we need to change this. See my preference rationale section. He's got a couple of things. I mean, he goes, I think this is reasonably well thought out. Uh, yeah. Because you remember the good old days, like when the only firmware you needed uh, was probably for that Wi Fi chipset that, like, oh, look, it works. With the NIDS wrapper or whatever it was back in the day. And like, hey, we can make it kind of do the thing. Unfortunately, we're in 2022, and you know what? Times have changed. You know, back in the day, firmware usually loaded on the device, but hey, those days are long gone. Why? Well, you know, turns out it's cheaper to include it, um, (laughs) you know, just a binary blob as opposed to the flash on the device itself. And yeah, I get it, you know, since add up, but Debian does include some free firmware binaries, but, you know, more often than not, you're going to have to enable the non-free to get up and going. Yeah. After you, but you know, I hear you. I hear you. Like, but you get it installed, and it's not a problem. You go into your app sources, and you do the non-free thing, and yeah. What if you can't get it installed? Like network card, network card. Uh, you typically don't have wired Ethernet on a laptop these days, and Wi-Fi is not up. And you get a net install. Maybe you can get a full install. But maybe you can put it on from a thumb drive. They're thinking about problems like this and i was reading through the comments on this post and one solution was well you just go buy a usb ethernet dongle attachment that that's not realistic that's not the way you want to be thinking about it and uh you know there's a little bit of confusion like i went to the debian the main page on debian went to their download just went followed through what a typical person would do and when you click download it automatically starts downloading uh just a regular debian image and net install image without the non-free firmware 
But at least on that page, while the download thing pops up, it says, hey, this is the unofficial version of Debian with the non-free firmware. That is, mm-hmm. in, you know, you can go ahead and get that. Now, to be honest, if you do it on a desktop, you're going to be able to get to the install just fine, more likely than not. But, you know, I'm glad that that page does, even though it's not very, cl- I mean, it's it doesn't really point mm-hmm. out. It doesn't have a blank tag attached to it um, to tell you that you can go and download it. Now, even around the uh, non-free, there's a little bit of a, philosophy the uh, booga booga this is bad and stay away from non-free and i get it each to their own yeah. whatever but you know steve brings up a good point he does <laughs> yes like, he does this is a very very good article <laughs> one of his solutions is like hey can we no longer pretend that the non-free images are unofficial since it's just debian mm-hmm. with the non-free firmware images Maybe there's some counterpoints to that. I don't know. I'm I'm really curious. Uh, you know, wh- wh- what does everyone else think about this? Because I, I come from that time of not expecting Linux to install, or, you know, yeah. to work on the first go, much less without issues. I mean... I know. We're, we're used to compiling our own drivers and compiling our own kernels. And it's, you know, it doesn't have to always work out of the box. That's part of the fun of Linux to us. But a modern... A modern distribution kind of needs to work, especially for the beginners, <laughs> for and, and and those of us who've been using it a long time. It is convenient to have all the drivers already there, and um, you know it's a, a problem that Debian has actually faced for quite some time, especially since many new laptops don't have wired Ethernet and proprietary firmware blobs are often needed to get, you know, say the uh, Broadcom or Belkin Wi-Fi cards working. That, that's that been an issue for years. Mm-hmm. And I've needed to use the non-free Debian images for that reason, uh, just to get some of those drivers working easily. And uh, yeah, that's definitely a thing. I mean, I download the uh, ones with the non-free firmware because I just want it to work. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I do. Like, that's where... You know, I don't do a good job of like carrying the flag there because I'm a Linux zealot, hundred percent open source. Free, I love it. I support it. I champion it. But I can also be a realist. The older I get, the more yeah. realist I am. Um, even like there's a binary blob that I need to initialize the FPGA in the audio format converter that's powering the show right now. It's got to mm-hmm. be done. Is there an open source equivalent? Nope. Like there's not even open source equivalent or like alternate hardware that exists in that range. And it's going to be there. But I don't know. Another proposal is to have like a segmented uh, part for like the non-free firmware packages and like uh, just a component in the archive. to enable Yeah. It. And I actually like that idea. I think that's a, a nice in between. It is. I, problem. It seems yeah. like the contention just reading on the comments on this is they don't want to include it in the ISO, which I get. Yeah. I get. Mm-hmm. I get. Yeah, because of their, yeah, they they don't want to include proprietary. Right. <laughs> they, you know. Right. <laughs> and you, I understand that. You know, other distros are dealing with that too, like Fedora. Um, they're, well, this was, they're, the, yeah, the first you know, thing I thought was like growing up with a Red Hat and Fedora was, you know, yeah. MP3 media codecs, like that was... Absolutely. Yeah, out of the box yeah. experience. You couldn't do. You, if you got to X, you were like doing a little happy dance around the house. You, yeah, I don't have to set up X, and uh, then you would get everything else set up. But yeah, <laughs> there is something to be said about having that out of the box experience. And I, I don't know if anybody. Mm-hmm. I really want some feedback on this. Um, feel free to write in the show. Leave a comment on YouTube. I, I've never looked at. Debian as that distribution. Like that never seemed like a goal. Yeah. Debian. No, I understand. Especially since it needs to, it supports all the older architectures, uh, which I need for my vintage computers. Mm-hmm. You know, it still has, there is still, still community support, support for deck alphas and risk systems and CISC and 
and MIPS and a, a lot of architectures that no one else supports. And with those those computers and those CPUs, you really you you sometimes do have to compile your own drivers to get things to work. You know, but it's just I, something you do. <laughs> it's got its own niche with um, you know Debian by design is an LTS. Everything is like kind of yeah. like two or three years. Nothing changes. You get security updates, and it's one of those tools to me that you'll find it if you have a need for it. Like if you go looking, yeah. like I did, I'm like, hey, I need something that's not a moving target that I can build a studio around. One of the first things I ran into, I was like, yeah, why don't you just use Debian? It's got everything you need. Mm, I don't know. Uh, hmm. Again, I'd love to hear some feedback from this because this doesn't affect me. This doesn't affect Jill. We're going to look at it and be like, oh, yeah, in fact, that, da, 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 and it's not going to be a problem. But for a new user, that could throw them for a loop. And mm-hmm. But our new users thinking about using Debian? Yeah, most not. Yeah, no. And a lot of people steer them New Year's is away from Debian for that reason. Yeah. And I mean, you want to get them on something like, yeah, (laughs) with the edges filed off like Arch. Yeah. Yeah. Arch. (laughs) Ubuntu. Ubuntu. (laughs) Fedora. Yeah. (laughs) Even Fedora. Yeah. Fedora is a kitty cat these days. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. Uh, Speaking of commercial binary proprietary software, everyone's favorite thing. Like. <laughs> yes. DaVinci Resolve 18 beta is out, including cloud features. That's right, the cloud. And you see a thing on the desk? That's not the eGPU. In fact, that is the eGPU enclosure, but now it's full of clouds. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Pay. Quite a bit, actually. A <laughs> couple of things with this. Uh, I watched the stream yesterday, and it was pretty interesting. A couple of new features, mm-hmm. object mass features, uh, are missing in the Linux version of the beta one. Presentations, object mass, Dobly Atmos, and a few others. They're still working on them, but they're coming. Didn't have any hiccups when I did the upgrade. I was happy to see that. No problems with the DNX HD ingestion, uh, H.265 HEVC export. Everything went smooth. Uh, this upgrade will. Now, I want to point out, Upgrade your database, and you cannot reverse it. So back up before you do that. And mm. uh, but you get the Black Magic Cloud Store. There's a mini version, as it included in here. Uh, there's the cloud where you can log in. Cloud. Mm-hmm. Do they have a? I want a picture of the little mini one. It's kind of adorable. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I saw it. I think on another page. <laughs> yeah, I've been through a couple of these. Uh, also, if you're wondering what is DaVinci Resolve. Nonlinear video editor. It's got an audio editor. It's got 3D modeling built into it. It's got a full coloring suite. Um, that's a lot of projects packed mm-hmm. into one. But the cloud does something that's kind of interesting. One, you can roll your own cloud. You don't have to rely on Blackmagic, but that is an option. You can buy your own cloud server for a project. And this is where it gets a little bit interesting. Like the little mini cloud, like three grand. That's expensive. Yeah. But compared to like the big one in the old GPU enclosures, those started like thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. Man, not meant for peasants Mm -hmm. like you and myself. Uh, But the ability with the cloud functions are very neat because uh, it's gotten really good at creating light-ish weight proxy files that you can distribute across an entire team. So you can have, at the same time, people can be working on just doing editing and uh, you can have somebody doing VFX, you can have somebody working on audio, somebody can do color grading all at the same time. Or... You know, if you have a smaller production house or something like that, and you're doing dailies, you can bank that over to a building next door and not have everybody on set and get that back. Very interesting tech. You know, I've often thought to myself, it'd be really neat. Even if it was for, you know, just simple like YouTube projects and stuff like that, being able to get multiple people working on the same project instead of trying yeah. to ship, you know, we get done recording the show it's gonna be like 30 minutes that's uh the mezzanine file with two three four channels of 32-bit float audio that's about 60 gigs and that's not practical like if i had to send you that it would take an entire day wow (laughs) yeah so i'm this this is just it's a huge release the cloud collaboration is so needed, um, especially now since uh, DaVinci, it's been for quite some time, it has become an industry standard with uh, video editing, uh, color grading, motion graphics. 
So having this collaboration is definitely needed because other suites uh, that are competing with it do. And But the nice thing is, is this one isn't subscription-based. So the Blackmagic Cloud Project Server actually only costs $5 per library per month. And only the hosts pay for it, not the collaborators. And when you delete your project library, you no longer pay. And that's awesome. That's much better than the subscription <laughs> service that some of the other uh, high-end uh, um, editors and suites have. <laughs> Talking to you, Adobe. <laughs> so... <laughs> So that's a thing. And uh, this release also has lots of really great effects as well. Uh, new transitions and effects. Um, for instance, in the shape, iris, and wipe categories of the effects library, you now have a checkbox that lets you easily reverse the direction of the transition. So that's really cool too. So there's been updates uh, not just in the cloud, but overall in the whole application. It's so really good. I haven't run into issues with it. I've only played around with it for a day now. And, you know, DaVinci Resolve, it is, if you just, I, I like to say this, and I don't mean to downplay it at all when I say this, but you, you got to understand the gist of what I'm saying. If you're doing cat videos, huge fan of KDN Live, OpenShot, uh, pretty much anything else. I mean, open source in all these. Yeah. We, olive. We, we, yeah, <laughs> I was going to say Olive, but I wasn't 100%. It's like, Olive's one? They got some crazy yeah. names these yeah. days. Uh, yes. <laughs> we don't have the video editor NLE equivalent of Blender yet on Linux. Yeah. Uh, Blender is of that quality to where it is used in production professionally. We don't quite have that. Um, so I use Blackmagic, uh, DaVinci Resolve. And, you know, there's a free version. It's got a couple of limitations, but you can make videos with it. But um, I'm like $300. It's a reasonable price. Again, if you got the need for it, if you don't play around with it, but you need like, I don't want to say specialized because you need uh, big evil NVIDIA cards if you're going to use it on Linux. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Realistically. Either that yes. or you're going to find yourself with an AMD card from last generation running on a CentOS 3 7.3. Yeah. <laughs> which is probably not going to be a fun time all right flat packs we talked about snaps last week yeah we did so this is cool it's another awesome add-on for firefox so this add-on opens selected apps directly in gnome software by clicking install from flathub or apps.gnome and it is called flatline <laughs> that was a cool name bold name for a project <laughs> It really is. Yeah, because we don't want this project to die. <laughs> or flatline, as in medical terms. No. <laughs> so, you know, this is just something that's very convenient, especially since personally I usually use and install flat pack apps via terminal. But it was just, it's just really convenient to be able to go. Uh, to uh, Flathub or apps.gnome and click that little button and have it automatically uh, pop up in Gnome Software Center. That's very cool. Mm. And <laughs> of course, you do have to have Plat Flatpak installed with Flathub repositories in the Gnome Software App Center to use it. So if you're on vanilla Ubuntu, this is a great option <laughs> with Gnome or any other distro with the uh, default Fedora. Gnome. Yeah, Fedora is another one. <laughs> so not Fedora Plasma, but <laughs> Fedora Gnome. <laughs> yeah, this would require me to have GNOME installed. And yeah, <laughs> uh -uh. Uh, no, this is kind of neat. Uh, if you're running Firefox, like I like that idea of um, just being, you know, less friction between you and the application that you want to get installed. But you know, the security yeah. in the back of my head is like, I don't know if that's a good idea. I don't like anything that automatically installs or even brings that up, which is, doesn't auto install, but it takes you to where you ultimately want to be, which I think is a good compromise. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and actually you can install GNOME software and Mate and Cinnamon and, and a lot of other uh, desktop managers. Don't, don't tell people that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then they'll install GNOME. It, it's a gateway drug, Joe. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just playing. I don't have a problem with the project. Uh, I don't typically, when I say typically, I outside of morbid curiosity, I've never used a uh, like distribution, be it, or, you know, desktop managers, application GUI install thing. The closest I get is like um, Synaptic. I consider that a GUI for installing oh, applications. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> A must-have on every distro of Synaptic. I like the app stores. I'm guessing that they've gotten a lot yeah. better over the years, but like oh, the last yeah. time I tried, they were just slow, cumbersome, and I, hmm, not really my thing. Yeah, they still have issues to work out, but they are really focusing the different distros, like Ubuntu is focusing on their app center and making it cleaner and a smoother experience and, and faster at loading. So things are, are definitely changing in that arena. What we need is a third <laughs> container that is compatible with flat packs and snaps, just so we can have a third competing format. I don't care what it is. I don't know. Fragmentation <laughs> is awesome. That's how things get made. Brilliant piece of kit if you're on Firefox mm -hmm. and you want that, because hey, that's one less terminal you have to open. Good mm -hmm. times. Uh, cool. We're going to be talking about surveillance in just a moment, but before we do that, <laughs> if you like what we do, want to kick us some coin, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast pays for everything we do with the hosting and all that. And we even host our own podcast and video. I know, but we also make it available on YouTube and all the other places podcasts are available. And uh, we got some bonus things. If you're a Twitch sub, if you're a patron, you get access to our super secret Discord where we're at the other six days of the week. We invite you to come hang out with us. You can come play Trek Mania with us on Tuesdays and Friday. Yeah. That's another thing. Plus mm -hmm. the after show uh, this Saturday, we were playing Back for Blood because EAC and Back for Blood kind of work on Linux now. And we'll probably be uh, LGC versus the audience. We like to do things like that. And uh, if you like this show, this is the middle part. Live and uncut and podcast mm -hmm. format. You want the whole thing. It's usually like an hour and a half, two hours long. So you're missing out on a little bit there. Thanks to everybody who likes, subscribes, retweets, and whatever you do. What do you do on TikToks? Do you talk things? I don't know. Oh, you do dance challenges. <laughs> How do you share? Can you share a TikTok? I don't. This is oh, le yeah. <laughs> legitimate old man stuff. I don't know. Yeah. You can share. You can comment. You can thumbs up. You can thumbs down, which... I never do. Thumbs down. <laughs> but if I don't like a TikTok, I just move a video. I move on. <laughs> You're the reason they get rid of the thumbs down button on YouTube. Nobody knows this. <laughs> no. Joel's such thumbs downing everything so hard constantly. Like, no. <laughs> it is uh, time for a slice of pie. Yes. So. Oh, this one has a bird in the center. Very appropriate then for our next story. So cute. It's like a, a plastic or no, a, a glass statue. That's what it looks like in the center of a like a, a traditional apple pie. <laughs> Mayhaps. I, I look yeah. at it as something. I look at it as dinner trying to escape. Oh, no. <laughs> you would, Ben. Oh, here's bird a cute little bird. Pie. Look at it. So delicious uh all right oh <laughs> let's have a look at this bird net pie what does it do well hey man maybe you want to eavesdrop on birds you know without their birdie consent this could be a problem check your local uh, laws but this is a slick little uh, install for any pie running the latest raspbian os 64 bit only and it's going to give you 27 24 7 recording of you know all you need is a usb sound card you get spectrograms live audio streams charts and stuff now how much would you oh. pay nothing mm -hmm. you just download it and do it and something is really cool you know <laughs> i mean i like this but you know i'm sure there's some bird going like man 1984 wasn't just a book man oh uh, it it's neat it's going to pick up the you know bird calls and it's going to give you like when I say charts and stuff, I mean, it really does like bar graphs. How many times did I hear this or this and where and what day at what time? Nice. Kind of tempted to play around with it. If for there's like one bird call that I know that I don't know, but I can identify it. If like I've heard this on two different continents and I've always been like, what is that? No one gave me an answer. And I went to the, even to the trouble of what little trouble it might be. Like listening to bird calls on like bird calls dot. Yeah. TV or whatever it was and um, couldn't find it. Like maybe out of curiosity. I don't know. I don't pay a 
much attention to birds unless they poo on my cars. Oh, <laughs> well, I think this is actually just so sweet, um, especially for those of us who are interested in finding out what birds live in our areas. And honestly, this is a great tool for scientific research to track the population of, of different bird species. And uh, one of the things I have noticed uh, here in the United States is we're having a lack of doves. And that's apparently been a, an issue. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why scientifically that's happening, but we've had uh, fewer doves uh, calls. We used to hear them every morning. And now I'm starting to hear them a little bit more, but I was really concerned about our dove population. So this would be a good way to track that. I would like to let everyone know that Jordan has uh, provided us with a link to the subreddit, Birds Aren't Real. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, uh, as a fellow flat moon theorist, I mean, that may, may be put on your um, tinfoil hat. I don't know. Um, don't mourn doves, because then you'll make them cry, Steve. You'll make Aww. them cry. That's yes. a bad time. That's a fantastic project. But it's 36 in. We got to bounce, Jill. We got any okay. birdie last words? Chirp, chirp. Chirp, chirp. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Cuckoo, coo. Just as cuckoo, once. Cuckoo, oh. Morning, dove. <laughs> cuckoo, coo. Oh, oh. <laughs> I can't make good bird sounds. Sorry, Ben. <laughs> I'm pathetic at that. <laughs> hey, man. You don't have to be good. It's all about trying. That's yeah. what I'm like, I did at least try. You try. I don't think I've ever tried to make some of those bird sounds. <laughs> that is a. Uh, that's the important things. If you take your life lesson away, man, uh, don't give up on something just because you're not Aww. great at it. <laughs> Thank you, Gametron in chat said. That was such a hoot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Arthur and I am going cuckoo for the birds. <laughs> cuckoo with Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> we'll see you next week, beautiful people. Bye, Bye. all. Love you all. <laughs>